Let's see. Oh shit, we already got a couple people in here. Sorry about that. Taking my sweet time getting going. Check the Discord real quick. I did send out an announcement, but I didn't see if it actually uh, went out or not. <laughs> so I retook my uh my uh streaming picture after the first one and just took a picture of the M Heart kick, but in the Discord it's still showing my ugly mug. It's pretty funny. Okay. I'll have a Discord invite. I'm sure somebody can uh, grab that and post it up for you. All right. So if you guys are uh, new to the party, this is the third installment of me trying to make my way through the belt system again. And um, I'm sort of skipping a few things and uh you know knocking off knocking off the rust and trying to prepare myself to be able to actually sit down and go white to black with a challenge lock with a special tool and uh to do two or more black belt locks uh, i'm gonna run the full gamut in one shot uh, but obviously not picking for six months is gonna lower your skills enough that you can't pull that off so I'm doing a practice run. I really thought that I'd make it to Brown on the first night. That didn't happen. Um, I got the purple the first night. I used the second night just to get to Brown. And now I'm going to try and fit red and black into one stream. So I have not... Um, I'm not picking up right where I left off. I do have the M heart in the vice still. But I have been progressive pinning it a little bit. Right now it's got uh, the back four pin stacks in it out of six. And I was able to get it successfully up to uh, four pins and then also five pins. But um, I st stepped away from it a little bit and then added in the six pin. And as soon as I did that, it was like, it just laughed at me. So I had to drop it back down a couple pins. For those of you that don't know what the belt system is, I don't know how you have even found your way here, but um, you should check it out. It's actually a really fun way to enjoy lock picking. You can find it on the lock picking subreddit, r slash lock picking. And uh, you can also find the Discord link there. Uh, Discord's where lots of experienced pickers and plenty of people that are not experienced but just want to talk about locks hang out. But prepare yourself because it's sort of a dumpster fire sometimes. So you have to be willing to put up with nonsense to learn. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but my neighbors are out there picking, so I got to close this door so I am not distracted. Which means I should probably not smoke for a little while. All right, so here we go. Uh, this M Heart is in particular. A pretty easy bidding and a pretty easy keyway as far as they can be. Um, so you might think I'm taking the easy way out, but I promise you it's still pretty difficult. So here we go. Uh, what I found with this one is it seems to be okay with just going clockwise and the 
ticket to it. Seems to be, at least in this particular lock and in my experience, to try and rotate as you're picking the pin stacks. Um, I watched, I did a little bit of research on this one because I have been beaten by M Hart before. And so I watched Gio's video. Uh, if you don't know Gio, he was a, a French picker that sort of came on the scene, picked everything hard, <laughs> uh, disappeared off into life again. But uh, hopefully he'll come back. Anyway, he did a really good instructional video on how to pick one. And his advice is to go really slow and uh, feel for very light tension. Um, uh, not tension, feel for very light feedback, but also to rotate each stack as you pick it. So you pick it to shear, then you rotate that stack before you move on. Um, what I have been doing instead, which seems to be working, is attempting to rotate the stack as I lift it to shear. So on this key and this lock, let's see if I can get that without moving my tension off. I'm pretty sure I got one picked already. Uh, you'll see it goes, oh, out of focus. All right, fuck it, I'll start over here. It goes left, 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 right, left, left. So that's pretty easy to remember. And this bidding is very, very, very forgiving. It's all higher in the front and lower in the back. So, Dumbledore says Geo can pick a brick wall. Yeah, he could pick uh, pretty much anything out there as far as I know. He's up in the uh, to the super heavyweight class up there uh, with Tumblr himself and CJ and Captain Hook. All those guys make me want to be better. All right, so... It's sort of a weird thing on this lock where I feel like it goes pin four, pin six, and then, uh, what is it, four, six, three, and I never pick five somehow. So I think what happens is when I go to set six, I accidentally get five every time. And they are the same cut height, so uh, it makes sense. All right, so I got a little bit of counter rotation, or counter rotation, a little bit of rotation on the core there which I think means I've got the back three, all the lefts uh, picked and rotated. And so I'm gonna go after the number three pin, which is the only right hand cut in the lock. And because of the angle of the keyway, it doesn't like to be picked nearly as much as the other ones do because I have room to sort of turn my tip to the left and uh, try and bring those to shear and rotate at the same time. Let's see if I can get this guy to go up for me. What's going on here? It is possible that I've overset something. It actually feels like I need to pick number five. Okay. All right, so that's four out of six pins. That's not a victory yet. Um, I'm going to have to put pin stacks two and one in. I think I'll probably be fine once I put number two in. And then once I put in the front pin of all pins is where I'll start losing. As you can see, the Desmo is still hanging out. I have not put it back together yet. Just kind of left my station how it was from the last time. I did wind up finding a multi-lock uh, interactive key pin, though which makes me really happy because this outer key pin is the one thing I was missing to be able to have a complete lock. So, oh, I gotta show correct Gene's comment here. He decided to curse. There we go. Okay, so pin stack number two. Let's slide these babies back together. If you're new to M Heart, this is why they're all the rage. Let me get a, try and get a decent shot of these pins real quick. Eh, there's not really any good way to do it. There we go. All right, so you see there on the top of the key pin, you have a little T-bar, and then on the bottom, oh, I had it backwards, my bad. So you have a T-slot, rather, on the key pin at the top. And then on the bottom of the driver pin, you have the T-bar. And so they slide together, and there are tracks cut on the inside of the lock. And the only way for you to rotate the lock is if these are rotationally correct. And that way that can slide out. 
<clears throat> All right, back to it. I lost one of the springs for this lock the other day and about punched a wall, but uh, I went through my normal procedure, which is quick pick everything up very carefully and then set it to the side in a nice pile and then sweep everything on the floor because it was not swept and then break out my stack of neodymium magnets and do a, a sweep across the floor, like the, the whole thing. And I didn't find it. So I was like, okay, that thing's gone forever. And uh, I was picking a little bit later on in the day and I looked over and I saw that my little uh, ashtray here, which is magnetic because it's not actually for ashes, it's for uh, tools and hardware, had a, had a magnet stuck in it, or had, a, uh, had a spring stuck in it. That was my spring. So it, bounced, it shot through the air, bounced off the wall and got sucked into that. All right, so I'm going to have to take this out of camera for a second so I can uh, hold down the spring and push the pin cover back at the same time. I'm sure there's a better technique for this, but just pushing it against my workbench seems to be uh, working for me pretty well. All right, so now we got five out of six. Still doing a progressive thing a little bit. I'm going to try and keep the feel of it. One thing I have noticed, though, is when you progressive pin these, it um, it can almost be a little bit like cheating because when you go back and you pick it again after it's already been picked, like right now, uh, everything is already rotationally set. So you can just pop them up to shear and the thing will open. Uh, so I'm going to use the key and reset those guys each time so that I'm getting real practice instead of... Um, you know, inflating practice. All right, back to number pin number four. Trying to kind of turn it to the left and pick at the same time. On pin number six. Trying to kind of angle it and pick it at the same time. I feel like that's higher than it should ever need to be. I can't, I got to remember that there's a new pin in here too, so my binding order may shift on me. It's never a guarantee that the last one you add is the last one in the order. Kind of have to test around and just find what's bound. Pin six does not sound like it's rotationally set. So whenever you have these things correctly rotated, they kind of rattle. It's a real uh, loose sort of sound. Let's see, it kind of feels like two needs to move now. Okay. What else we got? All right, I got a little bit of rotation there, which seems to always mean that I need to do the one pin that's uh, rotated to the right. I don't really know why that is, but that's what it seems like. Oh, snap. Super Llama's in the house. And CJ. Tumblr, are you still watching? Just so you guys know, any sort of comments that you put in the chat um, that get flagged by YouTube, they're just like automatically redacted. I'm not doing that myself, but I'm also not gonna take the time to stop and like show all of your comments. So if you refrain from cursing, you, there's a better chance that you'll actually be heard. For some reason, the normal uh, progression on this is not working. Which makes me wonder, what's that pin five that I don't, oh, there it is. Okay, so pin five is like, you have to just touch it. You don't have to set it, you have to just touch it. 
um, both times now with the four stack and the five stack. That's been the thing hanging me up. So I'll try and remember that. Uh, hopefully once I get six pins and it doesn't take me so long that I could possibly forget that. That works. Reset. Slide this back open a little bit. We'll put chamber number one in. That'll take us up to six. Yep, corn cob. This is the first one. I'm working on the M heart, which is where I left off last time. Uh, I didn't really give it any solid effort, but I uh, I have practiced this a couple of times since the last stream and not on camera, and I have not picked it open yet with six pins. So you'll still get to see the first victory if I make it there, which I feel I'm feeling pretty good about right at this particular moment. But I also thought I was going to crush the Desmo, and it it had my had my number for like four hours, so you never know. I'm pretty interested to take a stab at this uh, Miwa 3800 too. I was watching, it was, it's actually one of the first videos we ever did on this channel, and I forgot how early on in the process it was, but uh, Captain Hook did the breakdown and CJ did the pick and gut on it, and I did manage to watch all of C uh, Captain Hook's breakdown vid, but I never finished watching Crack Jean's pick vid. So if I get beaten, if it's kicking my ass, then I will go back and watch that. I believe in you. Thanks, guys. At least I think that's for me. Would not miss you picking an M heart for the world. Awesome. All right, so let's find out if... No, pin one is definitely not the first thing. Because it, it is just loose in there. Yeah, there's that. Back on the... I just did four. I'm on pin six now. Okay. I'm just going to give five a little tap now. And then... See, is it one, two, or three next? Uh, I don't know what that was, but it felt like it said it. There's two. The feedback is just like gone now. That's just totally gone. Like, I mean, it's it still exists, but I can barely feel anything. And this is sort of where the rubber meets the road with M-Heart. And this is my experience with it in the past is I did get it previously up to five pins. And as soon as I put that sixth one in there, it's just enough difference that uh, I just can't feel it, you know. Maybe I'm just overexcited and not patient enough, not quiet enough. All right, let's try and jiggle some things. That's what I should be doing to see what where I'm at. Uh, let's take this crazy looking dude and see if I can get some jiggle out of this. Sort of sounds like everything's where it wants to be. That doesn't really mean anything. I'm also having a hard time telling uh, how high number one is. Okay. I just want to take a look. Uh, it does seem high enough. That seems high enough that I could have even overset it, maybe. But it's kind of hard to see in there, so. All right, let's just kind of fiddle around with it a little bit more, and then if that doesn't work, I'll reset. One of the things I wanted to mention uh, while picking this particular lock, it 
uh, was an idea that spawned in my head while practicing it, but also from a conversation in the Discord about Medicos. Uh, I feel like a lot of times resetting a lock like this does more for you than resetting any other kind of lock. Uh, because you have to rotate pins, you have a certain, I don't know, certain odds that uh, any number of those pins will be correctly rotated before you lift them to shear. So whenever you reset a lock like this, if you actually are scrambling it or using the key to scramble it, you just have introduced a new set of odds, right? Um, so I feel like resetting often on this sort of a lock is a good practice, not a bad one. But yeah, I saw Llama just said heavy. So I'm gonna crank it down and see if I can feel something now. Hmm. All right, six sounds happy. Five sounds happy. Four kind of does. Oh, two's not making any noise. Let me bring it back down a little bit. Come on. Do something for me. Pretty sure I'm on two right now and it's all bound up. Oh, I think maybe I just dropped something. Let's see. I dropped. Well, things sound rattly, but they also feel loose, which makes me assume that I've overset something. Okay, not feeling it, I'm gonna reset. Yeah. All right, so show of hands in the chat. How many of you have actually picked an M heart? A few of you, I know the answer to that. Yep, CJ for sure. Patrick, are you not in our Discord? I saw you ask about it earlier, but you've been here like each night. Oh, zero is in the house. Cool. Unpinned M heart, does that count? No, I'm sorry, that doesn't count. <laughs> M heart made me quick picking. Yeah, I I would believe that. It uh, was definitely disheartening to get to where I got, um, at least where I felt I had got, and uh, picked up an M heart, put it in the vise, and I was like, yeah, it's going along fine. One, you know, pin six, five, four, three, two, oh no. I've got no feedback. Not in the Discord. Do you act do you pick? Or are you just kind of curious? Yeah, CJ, I'm not about uh punishing myself. Like I know there's harder M hearts out there, but I'm not gonna go seek one out. How do you feel with the M heart versus Medico? Uh, M heart's definitely harder than Medico. In basically all cases that I can think of. That being said, I'm no master of Medicos. I, I think I've only ever picked an original. All right, let's see. 
So I got a great Dane next door. Lives lives next door to me. Big booming park. And uh he's just an awesome dog. His name is Titan, which I think is highly appropriate. All right, starting over. So another thing I came across that I should tell you about, um, in case you ever want to try and pick one of these, is um, I've found that because the pins like to sit pretty low right in this space, depending on the profile of your pick, you will not be able to just slide it straight back down that channel on top of this shelf here. And so what I've uh, what I was trying in the beginning, which seems to work, and I pull out whenever I get stuck, is you can kind of slide back behind it here and then just push up into that channel and rotate and then it sets you right behind that pin and it actually does a better job of putting you in position for tilting the pick and then setting it and rotating at the same time at least that's my theory i don't actually know if any of that's true this is all anecdotal say like six didn't want to let me behind there so That is definitely set. Hopefully it's not overset. Maybe number one feels like it wants to deploy. Real light feedback out of that one. I think this is number three now. And I'm just blowing around in this lock, not even trying to rotate things anymore. Which might be my downfall, actually. Okay. Got six, got five, got four. Well, I just touched three and it moved a little bit for me. Come on. What's up, pin three? What's she doing? Sounds like one is. Big one. I think two is two. It almost makes me wonder if you can accidentally um, get stuck by not picking it in the correct binding order because of the rotation bit. Like you have picked it in order for the first three pins uh, and they're rotated correctly. And then you pick the fourth one, but you don't rotate it correctly and you keep moving on. And so you've got all the pins set, but one's not rotated correctly. And then you're just stuck. I don't know if that's a possible situation or not. But that's kind of what I feel like I'm in right now. It seems like pin three is incorrectly rotated. It's hard to tell. Come on. Do something new. That's it, boys. We got it. All right. Let's red belt down. Now the crazy shit begins. This little guy. I don't know. 
Uh, I feel like I still need to do more research on it before I even fucking attempt this, but we're going to get into it. Let me gut this M heart first. Um, oh, yeah, I can just slide the top off. Just looking at the back like, uh, fuck that C clip, but I don't need to, uh, don't need to do anything with it. Just need to try and not lose my springs here. All right, so. There's chamber six. Let me go ahead and move this Desmo body over here. All right, might want to turn it back to actually get all the pins out. Okay, the cap just completely popped loose, so finger pressure is going to help me out. I'm pretty glad that didn't take several hours because I might have a real shot at finishing black tonight. I say might because I know what it takes to get into some of these. Sometimes it takes a few hours just to get the get an understanding of what things look and feel like when they're correct. All right. There's all my pins. I guess I'll just leave them there for now. I feel like uh, red belt is high enough that it justifies taking you guys out of the tripod so you can look at it just because that's what I would do for a belt video. And uh, you're crazy if I'm not taking the down points for that. So, yeah, you can see it's empty now. I don't know. Uh, CJ, make a ruling. Do I need to take this off and show you the inside too? He said, uh, I don't care either way. All right, I'll do it. Let's see, where is, where does this even come off of here? Oh, there's a snap ring on here too. That'll be fun. That's just sitting on a channel. I should just be able to push that off. As I predicted, just looking at it, it is pretty strong. Ow. Yeah, but I bent it. It got me right underneath the fingernail. I know some of you know what that feels like. If I do successfully manage to get to this Miwa and it's still early, I'm going to break out that uh, COVID challenge lock and give that a whirl too. Fix a lock only to be defeated by the C-clip. Get some fucking pliers and rip this baby off. Rusty shitty pliers that I still have. Just come in surprising uses. I'm just gonna trash this C clip by the way, in case you're at home cringing about the fact that I'm destroying it. I'm by no means a collector. I don't care if it ruins the value or whatever. Now with CJ's locks, I will be a lot more careful, and I am a lot more careful with borrowed stuff, but this one belongs to me, so. All right, so I got a snap ring, but I have no snap ring pliers, uh, which means, 
Uh, I don't know. Let's just see what it does. Maybe I'll be able to get it off. Sometimes you get lucky and these things are soft enough that they'll uh, either bend and get caught on the side or just bend wide open and you can just pull them right off. Okay. Oh, I got it up on the side there. So I need something to stick underneath there so I don't lose that progress when that happens. <laughs> I just got a private message that buzzed my phone said stop with the c-clip no need I'm already this far man I'm gonna do it I really need to just get some snap ring pliers. I've been fighting it for so long. This little bastard does not want to come off of here. But I can find the C clip that fits that. I'll grab some needle nose. destroy this fucker too. Okay. So now that I've been both off the back of this thing, you can see this is what an M-Heart plug looks like. It's got these channels there for the pins to ride in. And I think it's just a fucking awesome design. Plugs, uh, the Bible rather, doesn't really have anything interesting going on. All right, so that's M part down. Let me just pop you out so you can see these pins real quick and we'll move on. That is red belt. Kablams. put these back together right now so don't want to get any of this mixed up in it just on the off chance let's get another tray out Break out the old mo tray, mouth tray, however you want to say it. I say mo.
<laughs> brown tips for that gut. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, I need the Motre. You can't pick black belt box without a Motre. I don't know if anybody's told you that, but it's true. Okay, so let's talk about this lock a little bit so that I can be wrong and CJ can correct me. Um, what we got going on is four dimple pins, dimple stacks, whatever you call them, which are T pins, which means you have to set them twice. And they live up in here and are picked through this central uh, part of the keyway there. And there's a bump that runs underneath that's right in your way. So I'm probably going to have to do some work on a dimple pick. Uh, if I'm lucky, I've got one that's curved that'll fit in there. We'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, but the real star of the show is what's going on in this, you know, two thirds of the lock, which is the magnetic sliders, of which there are four. Uh, I know that the key itself has eight magnets, which I think was at least partially in, to uh, confuse. But uh, only one of those magnets is actually doing anything in the lock at a time. So it could be over here, or it could be over here, but it's probably a little of each side. Um, and I don't know which side it is. Uh, and I'm thinking, I don't actually know if this is the one that CJ picked on video or not, but I could probably watch that and speed up the decoding process or uh, it might be pickable without decoding. Either way, I'm probably going to need a piece of paper pen to sort this thing out. Uh, that being said, I don't have a magnet picked, but I do have everything I need to make one, so I'll do that real quick. And um, let's say, no, the sliders often have two magnets each, but not always. Okay, so are you saying that one is used to repel and one is used to attract, or that there's two magnets on each slider. Interact with both key magnets. Interesting. Okay. So I may have misinterpreted that part. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, get a magnet pick made to begin. So I can let the glue dry while I figure some other stuff out. Um, so I need a sacrificial pick again. Mm. Let's see what I got. So I've got a bent 15,000 Peterson hook. That seems like it would be a pretty good candidate. Although I don't know uh, if I should use something sturdier because I don't know if the sides of this lock attract the magnets at all. Make sure the shank of the pick is thinned down enough to rotate all the way around in the lock. Okay. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So you can flip it to the other polarity. Okay. The question is, is this long enough to give me what I need? Yeah, that should be fine. So if I start up near the thinnest part, I'll have to thin it a little less. Um, and I can put markings on it. I'm just going to snip it off right there. Oh, that went somewhere. All right, let me find my magnets. Got a whole stack of them. I need one. Tiny little guys. I don't even know if you could see that on camera. That's right there. That part was easy because it wants to be on there. So I just need a little bit of super glue to keep it from departing that pick tip. And then I'll shape the shaft a little bit and we'll move on to the next thing. So 
Okay, hopefully this isn't all dried out on me. Test it out on some duct tape. Here we go. Oh, yep, there it goes. And that's why you test it on something that's not your project. Because occasionally the pressure will build up and it'll shoot everywhere. Okay. Also a good idea to start with a paper towel. CJ, I will make absolutely sure that this glue is dry before I go anywhere near the lock. I'm gonna have paper towel stuck to my fingers though. Don't get your fingers stuck together. I've uh, I've done that, so no shame. It happens. Use super glue. That's gonna happen. All right. I just need a little tiny bit here. And I will let the magnet do the rest of the work itself. Boom. Maybe right there to the tip of the guy. And we'll let that sit there and dry for a little while while we continue on with other things we will need. Next, I'm going to identify what sort of dimple pick might actually have a shot. And I don't have sweet multi-pick dimples like Captain Hook did in his video. So I will have to work around that and see what's what. Some of these guys are curved. And they tend to be pretty strong. But my guess is it's not going to fit. Um, but you never know. It's worth taking a look. Before we get crazy on it. Hmm. I might actually be able to do it. Not to let it ride all the way down the right hand side, but if you look, I don't even know if you'll be able to see that, but got a pretty decent action there. My only concern is that this nub right here is already too thick and will raise a low cut pin uh, too high just by insertion. So let's take a look at this. These all look like they're, they sit real low. Am I reading this right? Like, it looks like all four of these are low and this one just happens to be real, real low. Significantly harder to fight the spring force without them. Easy bidding. Yeah, okay. So it looks like I might just have to kiss them, but that does, uh, exactly match the problem that I'm saying this pick might have, which is that I don't want to raise them very high. So it looks like it looks like this will actually work. Uh, well, it's been very, very slightly modified a long time ago. It looks like I just kissed the edges off of it. But all right, so tools down, tension's the next question. Like I said, I didn't get to watch in CJ's video, so tension wrench becomes uh, a mystery for me. I'm not sure what's best here. It's very square, I notice, so if I'm gentle with an Allen wrench, that might do. But it's also going to put me directly in the way of the magnetic portion. So... And I'm lucky enough to have the dude in the in the chat. You need two tension wrenches. Okay. Tension the middle and tension one side, depending on which other side you're picking. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So you go vertical because you can stay, you can leave a vertical tension wrench in there. It's not going to stop you from getting to the dimples. So what's the second one for? Is it just so that you're more precise because you just got to get it right on the lip of those sliders? 
I remember that that threatened me a little bit when Captain Hook said you have to have really good tension control. Yeah, okay. I, I have never mastered the double uh, tension wrench method because I've never had to. It looks like I'm about to. Get some of the shit out of the way. All right, so what's a good fit? Can I use my trusty heavy bar? Doesn't look like it. A little bit thinner we go. That fits, but there's a lot of wiggle. What's the next lock? Uh, Malinky, this is a uh, Miwa 3800. And uh, if you meant what's next after this, uh, if I actually manage to pick this tonight, I'm going to do the COVID challenge lock. But I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. Let's say that. Hmm. I might have to go thin. Where's the thin one I had? That's just too thin. I guess it was this one. Well, I want it to sit in there so that I'm able to go left and right, though. So I don't necessarily want to use something that's not going to sit there happily. Um, that's not going to do it. You only need one direction. Slide tension will go to the other. Well, okay. So I mean, you did put yours in the center here, though, right? On this keyway. Tension into the fourth dimension. Thanks, Jordan. Real helpful. Okay. Do you remember what you used? Shot in the dark. Only go one direction from the middle. Yeah. Well, I mean, your standard, these uh, standard sparrows, top of the keyways, are just tall enough or short enough, depending on how you want to look at it, I guess. Uh, I can catch that lip down there and seem to tension, but it wants to slip off. So I think. Um, what do I want to do here? It's got like a slight um, widening. Like you see how it's wider at the bottom there than it is at the top. So that's going to help any flat tension wrench slip right the hell out. So I might have to just modify something slightly to fit in here correctly. But yeah. There's a pretty good chance that I'm going to wind up watching CJ's video on this stream and I figure I'll just like slide my laptop in front of the, in front of the phone and we can all watch it together. If I'll lose lots of people at that point. Berserker says hexagonal black flag bar. Oh, that's right. Okay. I do have a whole set of tensioners here that I've forgotten about. I don't 
don't like how far away from the face of the lock it sits, but that might actually just do it. Fits perfectly the shape of the middle of the cuter. This one is just square. Let's see if this one here does it. I'm saying the hexa hexagonal shape is the one to go with. Yeah, you weren't kidding. That is a really good one direction fit. Like really good. Thanks, Berserker. Okay, so there's that. And then what am I gonna use to tension the sides? Too big. That seems pretty good. It's a little bit loose, but yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna have a perfect fit on that from anything. So. So one of the things that you really should do before you go after any black belt lock is research. Watch all the YouTube videos that exist. Um, I didn't do that. Make the tools that you need ahead of time and become familiar with them. I didn't do that. Um, but I think these will work. So looks like we got tension and picks out of the way. I'm going to let that dry for several more minutes before I really get going at anything. Um, so now my curiosity becomes, is there a way for me to figure out where I want to put a magnet before I even bother sticking one in the lock? Uh, so I'm just going to put a... You're only going to put be putting light tension on the second wrench. Yeah, okay. You decode the lock. You to go with the lock, not the key. Fair enough. I'm curious. I just want to see if this does anything at all. I'm going to put some uh, purple marker on one side of this neodymium. Nope, I'm not. This doesn't want to go on there. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Check this out. So, if you try and push it on to this one, it kind of shifts to the side. Put it on that one, basically nothing. Don't feel much. That pulls it in, like it draws it in. This one doesn't do a whole lot of nothing. And this one, watch it, it forces it away. This one also forces it away. That one doesn't seem to have much of anything. So, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna get a, uh, a piece of paper and a pen. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, just making this up on the fly because I did watch uh, Cap's video. I know that you can have uh, basically where it's set up. The pull is over here, or the pull is over here, or it's got a split pull. Um, so I'm sleep now, night digs. And later, bonks. But anyway, um, I'm going to write down some things about how this acts with one side of a magnet and then make sure that I know which side of that magnet it's going to do that to. And uh, maybe that'll help down the road. Not sure. I'll be right back.
if there were a class on what not to do during a stream, I'm guessing getting up, get up and leave the room and leave the whole thing silent for a couple of minutes is not something you should do. But you know what? It is what it is. That saying means nothing, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. If I had like a, a huge crowd and was making money from it, I might care more. But there's 16 people watching right now, and I'm betting basically 99.9% .9 of them are from LPU anyway. Okay. And I left and went to the bathroom and didn't get a piece of paper. So that's always going to be one orientation. I'm coloring these in based on what I think it's doing, the flux lines are doing. That's just pushing it everywhere. So these two are push. This one seems generically flat. It's not super attracted, but it's not pushing it in either direction. This one is pulling it towards the inner portion of the key. When I try and set it straight down, it pulls it. This is like a strong, strong attraction. And these two seem to just be sort of flat. I can't tell if this one's pulling or not, this front left one. Seems to just be generic. All right. Magnets can be on either side. Some sliders have two, some have one, and the one can be on either side. Can be on either side. Two, some have one, and the one can be on either side. Okay. I'm just scrolling up through the chat right now to make sure anything uh, CJ said is noted. Not that the rest of y'all don't matter, but he's literally picked this lock before, so. Difference between a 3800 and a head hack. Is that supposed to be a headache? All right, so now that I know kind of how it acts with the key, I'll check this for dryness. Should have been dry several minutes ago. Nothing. I don't feel anything. Let's see if it acts the same way. Yeah, 
it's actually a pretty strong magnet considering like I'm trying to push it on there and it just it slides off the side every time. All right, so orientation of this and this are the same. So I know what the key will do to this, which means my guess is that the lock will do the opposite. Um, so it sits on there just fine. Pushes it to the other side. And the ones that used to be generally attractive are generally resist resistive now, but not a whole lot. So uh, let me try and picture this in my mind. I'm going to be picking it this way, so the sliders will be down. The magnet pads will be down. Which means that this side will be on the other side. reverse it. It's in towards the key, so it'll be on that side. pads in the lock should be set up sort of like that. The opposite of this will be set up in the lock like that. So wherever it pushes, it'll pull. Wherever it pulls, it'll push. That's the theory anyway. We'll see how much that actually helps. Much weaker through the pick shaft. Hmm. That makes good sense. It'll also make it slightly more confusing for me, probably, but... I have another pick I can sacrifice, is the new question. Let me see, since this has a 15 thousandths, maybe that little bit of metal won't matter as much. Yeah, it'd be pretty close. Yep, it is a tiny bit weaker. Uh, I don't know that I want to sacrifice this though because this is what I use for tiny crazy springs. I need to use something else. There it is, it is. Don't, your magnets seem pretty strong, probably fine. Okay. No digs, please. But I don't care about a pick, man. They're what two bucks, three bucks. They are Peter, that one is a Peterson, so it's probably like nine bucks. But I 
All right, so the next consideration is um, what order is it going to bind in? Uh, I remember Cap saying something like it's intermixed, so I'm going to have to go back and forth and check. Luckily, there's only four pins in here, so it's not adding a crazy, there's not a crazy number of elements in here. There's four sliders and four pins. It's just the number of variables involved in the sliders themselves that's got some difficulty to it um, and trying to keep track of that mentally. It might be best if I just don't do that and instead um, see how they act because uh, I might be able to tell something about what's going on. I think mm, probably what I'll do is uh, tension it and see if I can get anything out of the pins to begin with and then go to the sliders and then go back to the pins and then just bounce back and forth until I find something. But um, he did say that both the pins and the sliders need to be interacted with twice a piece because the pins are T-pins and the sliders have a uh, step down on the edge where they set. So uh, <laughs> still has a job. Thanks, COVID. Yeah. Quote option here on YouTube. Uh, I don't think you can quote people on YouTube. Mixed only if it's T-pins, not if it's standards. Okay. Oh, all right. So they don't, they're not necessarily T-pins. There could be, is this, have you taken this one apart? Do you happen to know which one it is? I'm not against getting as much information as I can. No clue. Okay. Fold this so I can't see the other piece. It's just going to confuse or distract me. I will accidentally look at the wrong one if this takes a long time. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure basically what he said to do first was um, tension the lock and then you know put the magnet pick in there and see. Uh, if you can get movement out of a slider or not, like look for a bound slider that way, because uh, that'll tell you where you got to start. That lock was brand new. Well, I appreciate you trusting me enough to actually touch it then. Um, I'll be careful. The more I look at it, the more I love this uh, keyway. That's, it's just neat. The design's pretty cool. It didn't take up a whole lot of room of, of this lock though. There's a lot of space occupied by the slider mechanism. Figure out what magnet orientations move the sliders before trying to test binding. That makes a whole lot of sense. Oh, Berserker, I found that overthinking is far superior to underthinking, especially when you have something complicated in front of you. Give me a sec. Okay, now we're ready.
If anybody from PepsiCo is watching, Wild Cherry Pepsi is the only thing I'm willing to sell out for. Please send me a lifetime supply. All right. Let's see what we get. Um, I'm going to pull a CJ move here since it's his lock and find something to pad this with. piece of leather here protect the sky a little bit straight up and down. Move these pads higher at night. Lend itself. In the shape of the kick. to the side. Just compensate for that angle. droplets. or something. Lighting a cigar in solidarity. Nice.
because it doesn't need to be super exact. But real close should be the goal at least. making these markings so they sit flush with the actual uh, head of the key there. With, I forget what that's called, the throat or the, I think it's the neck, the neck of the key. And I'm just gonna wrap these around. But in theory, when I see this line right outside the edge of the keyway, that should be the magnet right over where the pad would be if it were a key. I feel my vape in solidarity. Smoke some Kush. Washington, Seattle. I'm actually not in Seattle, but I am in Washington State. Some people I probably meet on the Sandbox Sports Bus. If you guys do. Don't touch the marks with your finger. Fair enough. That's a good tip. Lines aren't exactly super straight on this side, but. All right, now let's see what it does. Okay. Moves for me on the left hand side on the first one with the tip down. So we'll do this. We'll make ourselves two grids. One for tip down, one for tip up. side. Lots of movement. Tip down on that side. We'll do. There you go. 
tip up. Nothing. Nothing. All right, tip down at number two position. Nothing. I can hear something. It's not nearly as much as uh, the other one. So we'll put a smaller circle there. We'll go tip up number two. three. I'm wondering if the deeper in the lock I get, the less I can hear, just period. Um, which begs the question, should I break out the acoustic amp? Because I could. Sounds like a little bit of something. On three. I can confirm with uh, that amp. I really expect to only be able to find one thing that reacts, like one position on, on one side that's actually going to play ball with this thing. So we go four on this side. Maybe. I'm unsure if I'm just tapping the keyway or not. Something's going on on the left side there. If there is, it's very, very slight. Uh, that's definitely reacting right there. So it likes tip up on number four on the left hand side. Try to since this was light and so was this. I'm gonna go tip up again on three on the right hand side. Doesn't seem to be getting anything. Okay, I am gonna break out the amp though, just because it's still early, at least for me. So this is what it looks like to me. I know you can't probably see that very well. Um, so I've got strong reaction here with the tip down, very light reaction here with the tip down, and a seemingly strong reaction here with the tip up. Now look at my original map here. So I had two that were forcefully opposing with uh, the tip down and that corresponds pretty strongly to this movement here. And then I've got a response there, which uh, corresponds to a strong attraction. And then one here that seems to correspond to a half, uh, you know, at least a noticeable half magnet, mag ah, magnetism on that one. So I'm gonna break out the sound enhancement and verify just a little further, but. I'm pretty close, I think. I think maybe this was a mistell because it, was it this one? Maybe that's a mistell. 
Well, these both reacted. So I might need to like turn the pick slightly. I think maybe it's like cut. Anyway, I want to get the speaker out and play around with this anyway, because it's fun. Got my old busted uh, computer speakers from I don't even know how long ago. Try and verify what we see here. Because it looks to me like I need to go tip down for these two on the left hand side, tip down here, because I got nothing on tip up, and then back left corner go tip up. That's what it seems like. Yeah, it's a lot more obvious, isn't it? Actually, it seems like it'll react either way. So these are definitely the correct. These are definitely correct. Let me try for three one more time. It's still not. I'm still not thoroughly convinced about that one. That was a good sound. Yeah, it'll even give you a little bit with the tip up. Real small, a little bit. Okay. So that's about as good as I can map it, I think.
So whoever uh, in the chat has a name that's just a big string of binary. Um, yeah, I know. It's pretty boring to watch somebody set up this long for a lock, but uh, that's the reality of attempting to pick a black belt lock. If you just go at it with no fucking information, you'll be there all day. I still might be, but I like to get prepared first. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to make it screech at you. Can you still hear with the other ear, though? That's what I want to know. I just realized my camera angle is garbage. Sorry, guys. Kind of fix that up a little bit. Maybe you can come in a little closer to the wall. See my trash pile over there? I got more cardboard than the city dump. Not enough Pepsi logo, huh? Let's let's fix that right up. We don't want to anger our potential sponsors. Oh, that's not good either. Unimpeded. Dusty and Wendy's trying to type money signs over and over again, and YouTube's stopping him. <laughs> if you think PepsiCo is going to give me money for 17 people watching me attempt to pick a lock, you're crazy. All right, so I think I know what I need to do with the magnet pick, at least to get it to move. It doesn't mean I'm going to get it to move correctly. Um, and I feel somewhat confident that I can set these dimple pins because it looks like I barely need to touch them at all. In fact, the, uh, where is it? This one here is so deep that I feel like if I touch it at all, it'll be overset. Could be wrong. But, um, I mean, it's really low. It's like cut into the, that's got to be a zero lift. I feel like that has to be a zero lift because there's not enough space. Uh, I don't know. Me was make some pretty solid locks, so maybe they could get away with a hair that I can't see. But now look at the tip of this key. That is the nub in the center. And then that's the cut. Look at how deep that is. It's negative set. What does that even mean? I need to push it down. Almost negative. All right. Enough twiddling. Here we go. Let's see what we can do. Let me get this into a happy position. I'm going to go clockwise to start. This core is real loose in here, so I don't feel like I need much tension at all. And I'm going to start by trying the dimples first.
All right. I don't really seem to feel any sort of resistance at all, except on pin four, but that's probably because I'm hitting the side of pin four, not the tip. Uh, so let's start with a slider and see what's what. You know what? I'm going to put the sound back on this because why wouldn't I? It's not very sticky anymore, but maybe it'll sit there for me. Watch out if you got headphones on. I'm not sure if it'll squeal again. I doubt it. I think I just cranked the gain up too high. So I need to think about what I'm doing here. I should be looking for something that makes no noise where it used to make noise, because that'll tell me that it's bound. Tension wrench is in the way of my pick. Almost perfect berserker. Except for the handle. Womp womp. All right, it's Dremel time. Whoops. Watch out for that tripod leg.
crazy? I could have sworn. Because I just had this in here. Why does it not want to fit now? See if I can reach number four now. Much better. Mm -hmm. Need to move it less. Probably. Take a lot less. Uh, I wanted to be tip up on that one later. I'm not really sure if I'm doing anything, but I guess we'll find out. See if any of this stuff's bound up yet. Off. I don't need safety glasses when I'm trying to see. So what I don't know, what I'm thinking about it is, what is it supposed to sound like if the slider is set? Which it shouldn't be anyway yet. I should have to go after it one more time at a minimum. And I'm sure I didn't get them all halfway there on the first round, so. Um, snaps. Okay, so you get like a definitive noise from the slider if it actually sets. So I haven't said anything probably then. Let me try to 
turn this up there. I have it at square 11. So one sounds bound up. And then once you reapply tension, what are you looking for? Like I understand that. Are you guys talking about MCS? Okay, so I mean, you hunt around for no sound, loosen tension, move it around, reapply tension, and if you get it right, it snaps at you. Is that right? Okay. After it snaps, does it stop making noise?
What you heard was this. If I hit the thing, it sounds like a snap. I'm just trying to get any this first one to actually uh, do something. Say one is bound because it's not making any noise when I have tension on. But two is making noise. Four upside down. That one doesn't seem to be making noise either. Maybe I'll play around with that one. three over here. Two's making noise. One's making a lot of noise. Number one. That's number two. It's a lot quieter than usual. It's still making noise for me. That's three. It was quiet. It's been quiet the whole time. And that's four. So since three is making the least amount of noise, I will go after that for right now.
It's hard to tell if that's me scraping or if it's uh, me moving the slider when it's this amped up. Side of the pull back one. Okay. Ooh, didn't like that. Turn that off for a second. That humming is annoying. So I'm not getting anything that's um, interpretable, I guess. I haven't come across anything that seemed like it was going correctly. So I'm trying to think of a new plan of attack.
the uh, strongest desire I have right now is to take some stuff out of it. But I also don't want to take this thing apart multiple times. Let me see what it looks like as far as disassembly pain. Ah, damn it, it's a snap ring. Although it looks like I might be able to just take this back cap off and slide it right off the back. slides fairly easily so I should be able to at least take the pins out of the equation pretty easily feel like probably not too much to deal with to get a slider or two out of here without totally taking it apart all the way. Well, let's see what happens when I take these little screws off. If I can slide that snap ring off and I don't have to look it up, then maybe I'll do that. <laughs> this thoughtful pause is brought to you by, you guessed it, Jerry Pepsi. Got enough leeway on the side there. I might be able to pop it loose, but I don't know. Vice it up and use two tools, yeah. small flat head.
<laughs> Correct. Um, I will stop if it looks like I'm going to break something. I feel like I can get this off of here. I got both of the... Uh, points that you would normally spread apart up over the side, just not. all the way around it. <laughs> Geo, what's up, man? Welcome to Magnet Hell, he says. Really wish I had a pair of pliers that could fit down in that gap because I have done this on bigger snap rings with bigger pliers and it works just fine, but... Uh, Maybe Call your phone, does it come on stream? I can talk the method if you want. Do you mean the method for picking this lock or do you mean the method for uh, getting C clips off the back, spring clips? Fair enough. I mean, you could, you could call me and I could probably put it on speakerphone. I'm not sure. That would be pretty funny. Although you might want to wait because I'm going to have to go to the bathroom in about four minutes. Let's try this. Oh, come on.
Well, that's not going to happen. I thought it might. I'm trying to think if I have some other thing that would make this work. I mean, I, I sort of have to figure this out anyway. Like, it would have been real frustrating to get through this thing and then uh, not be able to take it apart, so. I just don't think I have anything that's small enough and strong enough at the same time. Unless maybe two Allen wrenches. Baby Allen wrenches might do it. It's sort of the same thing as snap plugs, except for, you know, lack of leverage. I don't think that's small enough. <clears throat> That's about as small as it gets in a normal set. I don't think that's going to work. It's right on the edge there. Come on. All right. <laughs> I scratched it a little bit. I'm sorry, CJ, but it's mostly just on this washer here. Tail toff? I don't know what that means. I 
Okay. So before we go any further, keep things where they belong. Put these here. I'm going to carefully slide off this top piece if it will let me. It seemed like it would. Catch the edge of the spring there. Move her out. Looks like uh, looks like T pins. careful on this next one. Oh shit. He says right before getting shot in the eye with a spring. What I was going to say is I need to be careful on this next one so I can see which way they sit. Just wanted to confirm that little ridge sits downward. Should be obvious, but sometimes it's not this to me. All right, now I got to be real careful. protection bar out of the face would be enough just key in and slip out leave the key in as you pull it out okay I got some square gaps for the sliders to move into. That all looks the same as what I saw earlier. And we got some little slider beads. So I think probably what I'll do is leave the pins out and take out two of these sliders. Let's see if I can figure out a little better what I'm supposed to be doing. But these are sprung sliders, which means they're going to want to leave the body, I think, as soon as I pull this key out. And that I am concerned about. So I'm going to go to the bathroom and wash my hands thoroughly. And uh, I'll go real slow.
Okay. So CJ says the springs aren't strong. Mm -hmm. I should be able to pull these things out carefully. So I'm going to take out the front too. I like to progress it pin from the back. Where are my tweezers? Springs are tiny. Okay. I'm going to put the key back in. Put this back in the lock here. Alright, now it's just bound up by the sliders. That just snapped off the table. Don't take the cover off if you don't need to. Get that rid of the sliders. Yeah, I'm not messing with the sliders. You're saying this piece here has a sub assembly? Oh, okay. Kind of looks like a sleeve. Interesting. Yeah, I don't plan on messing with that. Okay. I think it's probably wiser to just progressive pin it without Less going on, just gotta be careful not to sad ass in this thing. The cover on the plug, putting it back, is a great way to crush the spring. Checking all the notifications on my phone.
All right. Let's see how it feels. Let's see if we get out of it now. I'm going to try and do it with just my ears. Maybe move on this side. That's what it feels like. Okay. It's probably not nearly that pronounced when all the rest of the guts are in the lock, but that is certainly something.
Okay. New plan. Yeah, I, mean, I understand that I should be using more than one tensioner, but I'm not nearly close to the point where I need fine tension control. I can't even uh, get it to move into the position I want it to. So that's what I'm going to try and figure out now. sake of not fucking losing anything. I'm going to take number three out and mess around with number four. there. Okay, does that match what I have been trying to do? All right, so for one, I've been picking number four tip up the whole time because it's made the most noise. But as you can see, when I go tip down, it catches it and it's almost pulled in and then I angle it and it's all the way. So I did start using angling motions, but I was already starting off wrong because I had the magnet polarized up the wrong way. So that's the trick for number four. Looks like I'll be able to put them all back in and figure out exactly what they like, which should definitely help. And that calls for a cigarette. Chat here. I haven't been paying attention. Removing tension isn't enough. Got to rotate back a hair. Thanks, Sir Culper. See you later, man.
the way this is going, my prediction is I'll be able to beat the sliders by themselves before uh, I have to call it for tonight. I did try to start earlier, though, because um, a lot of people have been mentioning that they uh, need to go to sleep and stuff, which is pretty apparent because everybody's going to bed. But so here's the thing. Um, what I didn't have before that I have now, other than the exact knowledge of what to do with the pick, um, which sort of feels like cheating, but I'll give it, um, I'll give it some time because there's a good chance that it's still going to be hard. Um, so this one likes to be all the way in there and then rotate it to get it to see it sit all the way in there. But something that I didn't have before was uh, it really grabs this pick. And I think maybe I should have tried a little harder to look for feelings like that rather than base it off of just sound. Because it's noticeable. Like it's in a field right there. I bet it could support it. Yeah. So you get into that magnetic field and then just kind of wiggle it and it moves that thing right into where it needs to be. Same info using sound feedback without tension. Hey, what's up airplane? All right, so we're going to make a new grid, the grid of truth. So this one is definitely tip down and rotate clockwise. Yeah, these little magnets are actually pretty, pretty cool. They're fairly strong. I got like 250 of them from Amazon because I wasn't sure where my the old stack I bought for the MCS was. But that's just one of them. I got a bunch of them. I don't know. I think maybe um, sound is sufficient, but either my hearing's not good enough or it can lie to you a little bit because based off of what I had and feelings and stuff here, what I got was this is definitely tip up. I was convinced of that, but it's clear as day not tip up when you put it in the lock and you can see what's actually happening. The fact that you have to tilt it um, sort of makes perfect sense because this one likes it prefers one side to the other but I'm curious to see if any of the rest of them act that way all right so I need to very carefully put some of these back. I think the spring just lays right on top of it. Okay, 
sit in there there's like a little tray with a stop for that spring to sit in Tiny little springs. Luckily, I figured that out before the last one jumped out. Thankfully, the shape on these is such that you can tell pretty clearly how it inserts. I just took me a second to figure out which end went in first. So the game now is don't drop any of these and figure out what to do with the magnet pick to make them happy. So again, number four was tip down and rock clockwise. I'm just gonna hold that one. And I'm gonna hold number one and two while I get to three. I really need to hold all of them. Hmm. Might have been smarter to leave two and one out while I was doing number three. Alright, so one, three, tip down on the left hand side. Grabbing it a little bit, but not a whole lot. Definitely got it. Scrapping <clears throat> it. Not nearly enough, though.
is grabbing it on the right hand side. This might be where that other pick comes in handy there, CJ. Because it doesn't appear to be strong enough to do anything to this guy. It starts to pull it in, but it can't get it there. That's trying to push it out. Oh, that's the closest I've gotten at an angle there. Might be enough. It still has that lip out there though. It's like I can get it to the lip, but not all the way in. Someone's got my number. I'll come back to it. Just the two goes. Nope, that's not the way. At least the spring is still in there. Okay, let's tip down, rotate clockwise. Three hours. Okay, number one here. One is not what I thought it was. Tip up and counterclockwise. It's the exact opposite. And we're back to three, which doesn't seem to have an answer. some different angles around and see what it can get out of it. That is something that you mentioned too, was the ability to flip it over inside the keyway. Aha. 
got the answer. I looked right for a second there. That's as good as I think you're going to get out of it. So, three is vertical. Still doesn't pull it all the way in though, which is concerning. Because if it can't do that, then I'm counting on core rotation to get it the rest of the way. Well, hang on a second. That's it right there. So it's vertical with the magnet up against the wall and scrub a little bit. <laughs> if you're trying to do that blind, I can't even imagine how long it would take. Uh, all right, so three is vertical. Oh shit, on the other side. Cool. Magnet out. And screw. So I'll do this in order and make sure my notes are correct. Tip up counterclockwise. Boop. Yep. Two. Is. is tip down counterclockwise. Well, that was clockwise and it worked. No, it just says clockwise. All right, tip down clockwise. Just decided it was vertical with the magnet out. And a little bit of scrubbing. Yep. And four is tip down, rotate clockwise. adding and jiggle.
just wants it in back there and leave it there. CJ, how would you go about decoding this thing blind? You say you decode it using lock, but uh, if you're going off just what makes the thing make the most noise, that clearly doesn't work. Unless I'm missing something, which is very possible. So, I mean, what you're saying is in the exact is the exact opposite of what I got, right? Magnet with a tip down made the most noise, like a lot of noise. But the way you actually pick it is tip up and counterclockwise rotation. Park in position and rotate the pick, then slide in and out of location at each rotation. I don't know. I guess I don't understand how you would identify the difference in sound. That makes sense. See, I was just looking for uh, the most noise in general from like random action, which is probably why it didn't work correctly. Probably should have left two of those, taken two of those back out at least. But we'll see. <clears throat> Let's 
Since I've got three, I gotta work on the left hand side and figure I'll start this way to figure out what's bound. Um I wonder if I can hear it. Maybe CJ, you're still there. part that's got my got me confused is not what I need to do to them or when tension needs to be applied but what it's supposed to sound like if it's correct um, I guess it would still make some noise 
It should still make some noise when it's tensioned. Uh, we'll pretend that that one's right for now. I'm going to wind up having to take some of these sliders back out until I can get one at a time, probably. Three. Right, we'll pretend that one's right. Two is to down and rotate clockwise. Yeah, I'm still just as confused as I was before. But at least I know what to pick half to do now. Step in the right direction. I'll probably get it to like uh, the point where I can get a slider or two and then call it. So we know four is the only one in there. And we know that that needs to be tipped down and rotated clockwise with a little bit of jiggle. So right now, it makes no noise. As it's the only thing in the lock, it should be the only thing possible to be bound. So that makes sense. Go tip down like it wants to be. Turn off tension.
this to be there. This means you have to rotate it back to get it to actually travel to the Okay, I heard it that time. I'm gonna have to thin the shaft of this pick for sure. It's getting stopped by the tension wrench. It's actually pretty difficult to pick. Um, where your tension is based off of nothing except for noted position. Like you don't have any sort of feedback to speak of other than sound. It's very different. Obviously, I understood that getting into this, but it's one of those things where you don't appreciate the change until making it, I suppose. Come on.
I know that I can get to the required angle because I did it when it was open. Wow, that is real finicky. Oh, I didn't think of that. Just pick it, man. <laughs> Pharaoh, I'm, uh, I'm not just making it look hard. It's more likely that I'm just not very good. But that would suck if it got deranked because... Uh, I've already got one black belt pick that got deranked. Though that one sort of deserved it. The ban him uh, was not uber difficult. It just took some figuring out. So now that I know this thing is set, now would be the time to investigate what it sounds like. be able to differentiate that but that can be done See what's going on in the Discord. Got seven different fucking notifications. <laughs> Culper sent me a picture earlier of a cherry Pepsi in front of his computer screen with the stream in the back.
Yeah, it's trying to distract me. Yeah, you weren't kidding. It doesn't look like that. There's a whole lot going on. I love the way that red looks in the Discord. All right, now that I can barely do one slider, let's see what two sliders is like. Shit. Hold up. Pulling it out the front. stopped and now it's going again. But you don't mind. Alright, plus two. I started streaming this three hours ago. There is a certain point at which you're not really going to make money anymore. Uh, make progress is a better way of saying that. <coughs> and I'm pretty close to that point, I think. That being said, this is a pretty interesting rock. I don't dislike it, though I, it has been beating me pretty firmly. I'm just going to start off with two tension wrenches here. So three. So we know three doesn't make a whole lot of sound. And that makes me wonder if it binds before four. Let's find out before I start putting a wrench in there. I know three likes to be like that. jumped on me. That's what I get for doing this with no C clip on the back.
All right. Well, I'm sure it will disappoint some of you, but I'm going to call it there for tonight because I've hit the point where uh, I'm starting to get tired of it. I dig it though. It's um, it's different than most of the magnetic locks that I am a little more familiar with, which are the you know the rotors. One of these guys. If I do manage to pick this one, I'd probably go after this right after. But uh, yeah, I'm out of steam, so. It seems like about three hours is what I'm willing to do against magnets. Yeah, Berserker, this is uh, the Icon System M. It's the, what I'm told, basically, whoever designed it licensed it to both Zeiss Icon and Ava. So you got the MCS and you've got uh, the System M. And I am also told that this is in form factor and function all the same as an MCS Generation 1. And I am not well versed enough in MCS to tell you what the difference in generations are, but there's that. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Right, thanks for hanging out. There's still 11 people watching. I can't believe that. This has got to be sort of boring to watch, but maybe good background noise. Yep, that's generally what happens. You do some investigation and sort of wrap your head around how it works and solidify the things that you know about it and... Uh, sort of put the picking order into a more solid uh, context. <coughs> but when you've been going at it as long as I have, it's just kind of mush at this point. So, I'm tempted to grab something easy and pick it, but I'll also probably fail at that and look stupid. So. Uh, let me look around. Who do I have that I could pick at? Yeah, no. I'm done. Get that open fix. The green lock. <laughs> Do the bike lock again. So this thing... Uh, for those of you that weren't around for the first one, this one beat me like four times in a row, I think. Then I sat down the next day when I didn't have a stream going on me, and it came open pretty quick. If you're interested in uh, super ultra bike lock 
in neon green. I'm pretty sure I bought this at Walmart, like, I don't know, a year and a half ago. So if the company is not totally out of business, you might be able to find one and try it for yourself. While you're at Walmart, don't forget to stock up on Wild Cherry Pepsi. Now that I think about it, I don't know if I've ever even seen Pepsi products in Walmart. There it goes. So yeah, let's uh, where did this thing come from? Ooh, made in China. You know, China is the home of all quality locks. Model 93110, imported by Aldi Inc. of Batavia, Illinois. www.aldi.us. That's a piece of garbage. You shouldn't buy that unless you want to pick it just for fun and compare my time. Dusty, you uh, you actually pick locks or are you just kind of interested? <laughs> Pretty sure he's NSA. Well, uh, hi, I guess. Six months in. Yeah. That's a good time. Have you tried, uh, are you uh, working your way through the belt system at all? Are you in the Discord or you uh, just find it on YouTube? Right on. Blue is a good place to be. Purple, I mean, honestly, purple, purple and brown probably have the most fun to pick locks. Um, excepting Medico. Medico is challenging, but I wouldn't call it fun. And then Red Belt has a bunch of really fun locks. Um, and it's, I don't know, I find uh, challenging locks fun. So if you don't like a Supreme Challenge, then red might not be your sweet zone. But I find them to be hard enough to be entertaining and require investigation. And uh, they're a significant challenge, but they're not this. You know, they're not magnet locks. They're not. I take that back. Elzit, you can get a, a red bet. Red belt magnet lock called the Elzit. That's uh, pretty similar in nature to the MCS. It just has less rotors, I think. Top choices for purple. Um, so I guess it sort of depends on, do you want something challenging? Do you want something fun? Do you want something cheap? Um, for fun, I would say Duo is the best. Multi-locks in general are really fun. Um, what else is fun at that level? Uh, widely available and fairly cheap, but not very challenging at all is the Yale Superior. Um, Medico is probably the most challenging purple. And it's actually a pretty good stepping stone if you intend to go deep down the red hole. Two bar is a really cool lock, but I've never picked one. I've never had my hands on one to pick one. So I would be interested in investigating one of those. Isn't two bar like a... Uh, 
like a GMC sort of system or like Ford Motor Company ignition lock? Primus is a, uh, it used to be brown, I think. I don't remember now what it is. If you don't know the belts, it goes uh, white, yellow, what is it? White, yellow, orange, green, blue. And then it starts high security, purple, brown, red, black. Yeah, the Primus is, I'd say, a really good introduction to finger pins, but at the same level, you got the CX-5, also known as the Scorpion, also known as uh, Mark's High Security or something like that, and um, I love that lock. It was so much fun. All my red got downgraded. Yeah, several of the locks that I chose to pick have been downgraded. Um, what was? I think Bantam was the only black belt lock that's been downgraded. But the Dan, the Dan system, Don system, however you want to say it, um, does not reward you for picking similar locks. They're grouped, and you start losing points um, for each lock that you pick in the same sort of realm. And so I went after, when I was going after Black Belt, I did um, the 3KS, the ICS, the Duo, which are all in the same family, and then the uh, Multilock MT MT5 Plus. So if you look at uh, the Don chart or whatever, I have a whole lot less points because I chose very similar locks. And they were, you know, all Ava locks that were slider based. Asa Twins of Black Belt. I had an Asa Twin Pro uh, at one point, and I tried to progressive pin it in time to get a video shot for this channel, but um, it just beat me up good. I couldn't get it, and so we had to run uh, Geo's video of picking it, I think. Why pick multi-lock when you can just bypass? Because it's fun. Uh, the pin and pin dimple aspect is just really enjoyable. MT5 Plus was... Uh, really painful for me but it was because that was the first dimple lock I had ever picked so I had to sort of learn dimples and that lock at the same time and force my way through it do it with a half diamond I actually did use a diamond for uh what was it? Where's that shitty little pick? Mm, these things are all rusted to death. Where is it? I may have changed the shape so significantly that you won't be able to really tell anymore. This guy. Let's see this. This is what I used for the Alpha Spring in the MT5 Plus. Let's load that back in there. sort of want to pick this M heart again. I wonder if it would take me all night. Oh, I took it apart. Never mind. I'm not pinning that back up right now. Bully padlock, uh, as far as I know, is still, is still uh, unpicked, yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, you can you can beat bullies with a pick gun and very well made little uh, fingers, but the odds of it working every time are pretty small. And then uh, the first guy to beat it is uh, one of our own L LHG. He used to go by LHG, uh, also known as Chris Aaron's. He uh, he beat his with what was it? Five tools? It was like three three pieces of metal cut to the shape of the different bits in his key, and then a tensioner. So it wasn't exactly single pin picking but it sort of was at the same time and you know i would count it as that but doing the i don't think on the, on the double bully two of the tools touched to adjacent pin yeah that's what it was three pins or three, uh, three tools, rather. I like the bully, personally. I think it's a really cool design. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of those locks. I don't know that they ever worked out a way that you can service them, though. I remember after uh, Chris picked it, they sort of reached out and we're talking back and forth about whether or not they counted it as a legitimate pick and whether you you would have to have prior knowledge of the innards of it and this and that and the other, but none of that shit counts to me. It's can you manipulate the pins? And you can, but I mean, if you went at a bully blind, um, good fucking luck. And that's that's true of most black belt locks in honest and honesty. Like a lot of, uh, I don't know. There's maybe enough people that can pick several black locks uh, for me to count on one, at least that I know. <coughs> You could sit Captain Hook down with all his tools and a string of black locks, and I'm sure he could knock him out, but he's just exceptionally talented. Uh, there's not a whole lot of people out there like that. His tools would not have worked for other bully locks. Something similar to them could have worked, but it was a, a particular bidding, although factory, um, there was a particular bidding that allowed him to hit a couple of pins um, using one tool instead of two, but he also had the benefit of a zero lift pin or two in there, I think. It's, my memory's kind of fuzzy on it now, so I'm not going to say it definitely happened that way, but again, I don't care. I still consider that a, a, a defeat. Anyway, I'm going to go away from the camera now and go, uh, I'll hop back in the Discord chat, which is, I'm sure, where all of you guys are going to be anyway. Thanks for hanging out and watching. I'm going to shut this thing down. It's already long enough. Hopefully, YouTube can handle actually processing it. But uh, see you next time. I'm going to have to do this one more time, it looks like.